Hey everyone, it's Solomon here, and it's been a year since I got myself the M1 16-inch MacBook Pro. So I thought now is the right time to make my long-term review after a whole year of using this 16-inch M1 MacBook Pro every single day for over eight to nine hours per day. For some context, this M1 16-inch MacBook Pro is my daily workhorse. I am a software engineer and work on cloud technology like AWS, running servers, using infrastructure as code, I also make and edit these 4K videos on this M1 MacBook Pro 16 inch, along with the other general working admin that we use our laptops for. I guess you can say that I am a pro user, so I've pushed this 16 inch MacBook Pro as far as possible. The design of this M1 16 inch MacBook Pro was subtle changes, but also significant compared to the previous Intel model. You may have noticed that the laptop lid is actually flatter than the previous model, but the biggest change to the design is when you open up the lid and see the 16.2 inch liquid retina XDR display framed by bezel that are just over 20% thinner at the sides and roughly 60% thinner along the top. The brightness and the retina display make this laptop a joy to edit YouTube videos on or build new projects and deploy them onto AWS. Now, of course, with a big display and all this power, we have to compromise on the weight of this laptop, which is rather heavy, but it's still a decent and fair trade to make. Now, the notch is one of the most controversial design decisions Apple's made with this M1 MacBook Pro. And after a whole year of using this laptop, I can confirm that the notch has slightly grown on me. Something to note is that the notch isn't always visible in every application that you use. As we know, the other notable design change was replacing the touch bar with a row of traditional functional keys. Now this 16.2 inch liquid retina XDR display in the M1 MacBook Pro is one of the most beautiful screens that I've ever seen in a laptop. It's the same screen as we have in the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, except it offers much better resolution with Apple ProMotion adaptive refresh rate of up to 120 Hertz. I don't watch movies or shows on this display. I do watch YouTube videos which are filmed and uploaded in 4K. So I do wish that this laptop actually had a 4K display, especially as this M1 MacBook Pro has been built for professionals and creatives, including lots of people that work with 4K video. And it would have been nice to have a screen capable of displaying native 4K content. Maybe we'll get a 4K display on the next 16 inch MacBook Pros with the M2 chips. My favorite changes to this MacBook Pro has to be the ports. Finally, Apple have brought back the fan favorite port of the SD card slots. I cannot comprehend why they would ever remove the SD card slot, especially when so many content and video professionals use these laptops for their creative work. Another fan favorite is the HDMI port, but I must say, I don't think I've ever used the HDMI my port since buying this MacBook Pro as I connect to my monitor with USB-C, but I guess the HDMI port is a nice to have. Along with these ports, we also have the return of the MagSafe charging and three USB-C ports and a headphone jack. I hope Apple aren't thinking about removing or altering any of these ports as this M1 MacBook Pro is well balanced in terms of its ports. Now, the more nerdy and important aspects of a MacBook, the performance and output of this machine. This is the base model M1 MacBook Pro with no additional upgrades to RAM or SSD, and it's still super powerful. I think for 90% of users, the base model is more than enough power for creative work and engineering work. For me, where I see a clear difference and upgrade in performance is when I export my 4K videos in Adobe Premiere Pro. On my previous 16 inch Intel MacBook, it would take around 20 minutes to export a 4K video like this one. But with this base model 16 inch MacBook Pro, it takes less than 10 minutes, which is half the time it used to take. Now, I can only imagine how fast the M1 Max chip exports videos, probably in just a couple of minutes. And by the way, if you are looking to move into tech and become a software engineer, but don't know where to start or what language to learn, I have created the all-in-one guide called Tech Prep. To get you started and begin your programming journey, all you have to do is click on the Tech Prep link in my description and get your guide with code SOLLY for 10% off at the checkout.
Now having all of this power in the MacBook Pro would be pointless without a high performing battery. Luckily this M1 MacBook Pro has a rather big battery and Apple claimed that you will get up to 16 hours of full battery from full charge. Now this always depends on how you use your laptop as certain tasks and applications would consume a lot more battery but for me I just get about a day's usage out of my MacBook Pro when I do a mix of programming, editing, browsing and watching YouTube videos. Now getting a day's usage on a single charge is enough and also with MagSafe charging you can quickly power up the battery to 50% within just 30 minutes, which is why I love MagSafe charging. Now after a year of usage, I still experienced a 50% charging in 30 minutes, which is a big win, considering the battery has probably degraded after daily usage across the whole year. After many years, Apple have finally decided to place a 1080p webcam into this M1 MacBook Pro as I sit on calls daily. I think the camera is definitely much better than the previous models, but still think it could be a lot better. Now with macOS Ventura, you can use your iPhone camera as a webcam for your laptop, which I think is a bit random from Apple given their MacBooks have webcams. Now even with 1080p webcam, there still isn't support for Face ID. Apple love drip feeding us features over many years. Accessories are also a big part of how I use my M1 MacBook Pro and as I work in cafes and public areas, I decided to buy myself a private screen. This covers my screen from side angles and protects what I do. Not that I work on anything secretive, but it still gives me a peace of mind that I'm working on projects without anyone being able to see what I'm doing. I also love using an external mouse and I use the Logitech MX Master 3. Although the touchpad on this M1 MacBook Pro is one of the best, I still think having an external mouse just makes the usability and experience of a laptop much better. Another accessory that I use all of the time is of course my Apple AirPods. The AirPods just sync so well with the Apple ecosystem and changes smoothly and seamlessly between my MacBook and my iPhone. Now I use this M1 MacBook Pro in so many different ways, mainly it's placed on top of my laptop stand on my desk setup plugged into my monitor. And then I use my M1 MacBook Pro display as a second screen, but mainly for my Slack messages or emails. This has kept my MacBook Pro in great condition as I don't use a keyboard or trackpad that much. I also like to use my laptop out and about in coffee shops and cafes, and this is where I think MacBook really thrives, where you can just use a keyboard and display together. I love using my MacBook only without my monitor. Sometimes I place it onto my desk, but don't plug it into my desk setup. So I get to experience this XDR Retina display fully. Now, after a whole year of daily usage, I still think that this M1 MacBook Pro is by far the best machine I have ever used. I love this MacBook. I like opening up the lid and seeing the bright Retina display. The incredible display, the super power performance, the upgraded webcam, fast charging, and of course, the additional ports make this M1 Mac Pro still an incredible option if you're looking to buy a new daily workhorse in 2022 and 2023. Of course, the price is a sticky point, but I think the output and the work that you can produce on this M1 MacBook Pro and the return that you will get from it will be worth it, especially that you can keep this laptop for at least five years and it still will be more than good enough. Now let me know what you think of this M1 MacBook Pro. Is it worth the hype? Is it not worth the price? As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for yet another video. Peace.